video, we'll be learning how to scrape websites using the Beautiful Soup library. As we already discussed in the last week videos, data comes with all shapes, formats, and magnitudes from all different sources. But there is a major source of data that, in a sense, surrounds us, a, a source of data that we very much are contributing in building it, and that is the data that we could obtain over the internet from different websites. The basic idea here is basically that you scrape or pull out the information that you're interested in from a target website. You could be interested in a specific news headline and you'd like to collect as much information as possible about it. You want to bet, for example, on a football team and you need all its historical track records to make a useful prediction. Or you'd like to buy, for example, a piece of cloth that is currently too expensive for your budget, but you know that sometimes in future it will potentially be on sale. And then you write a piece of code to scrape the price tag of that specific item, let's say once a week, and then you know when to go shopping. If you ask me, it is worth the effort. Okay, so, so we could get a lot of data and useful information from scraping the websites. And the question is that, how we do it? In this video, we are using to we're going to use the Beautiful Soup library, which is very handy in scraping the data from the internet. One point that you need to keep in mind that although it is quite the easiest straightforward to do it, what we are doing here, but scraping the data is not always legal. So please, 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 when you're going to do that, check the website policies whether it is uh, acceptable if you scrape the data and the reason that you're scraping the data could be also important depending on the license provided on the website. And there's also potentially some other. So these are the things that you need to keep in mind when uh, you plan to start a scraping website project. So uh, as we said, we're using Beautiful uh, Soup library and we're going to learn it by going through an example step by step. And for that, I am going to do the scraping on a website, where is it, called foodwishes.com. I'm not sure if you have seen it before or not, but uh, this is a video blog, basically. There's a video, this is, there's a YouTube channel associated with it. And there's a chef basically explaining different recipes and as you can see each post comes with a title, a bit of summary about what we are going to see in this video and the link to the uh, video basically on YouTube. And at least on this front page you could see yeah, uh, one, two, three, four different posts. So, so what I will do in this short demo is basically to uh, write a piece of code using Beautiful Soup, scrape the website for three different items, which is the headline, what is the food that is going to make, uh, a short summary that we have it here, uh, a bit of information about the food, and the link to the video tutorial. And I'm going to save this in a CSV file. So let's see how we can do that. So let me open my notebook here and what I do first is to import the beautiful soup library and I strongly suggest that you use BS4. I also import requests and I also import CSV. I hope that you know how to open CSV files, how to write CSV files and how to close CSV files. If not, there is a tons of information online. Please have a look because it will come handy. Uh, not only in this course, but in future, whenever you're doing some data science project. So what I do first, I am going to import my libraries that I'm interested in. And here in the second block, basically, uh, this request.get, and I'm adding the foodwishes.com, uh, blogspot.com address to get it, the, the website, as an object for Beautiful Soup, basically the, the object that is understandable by Beautiful Soup. 
uh, and then because I want it in a source code format, I'm adding a dot text. And uh, sorry, this is where we're changing it to a beautiful soup, ar soup object. And there are several different uh, parsers, HTML parsers that you could use. I decided to go with LXML, but honestly, in my opinion, there's not much difference. So feel free, whatever you want to do. So let me run this and we'll take a bit of time. Yep. And we're done. So, so let's see, what is it that we are ex we actually extracted? Well, it's quiet an ugly piece of source code for an HTML file. This is what you typically see in an HTML file with all different divisions. The head is here and it is supposedly closed somewhere and then you see all different tags. Uh, well, as I said, it's a bit ugly so you, you need to know what you're looking for. Let me Go back to my Chrome again and let me open the source code and let's take this out and let's try to have them somewhat side by side and see what is it that you're going to scrape from this website and and this is a bit probably this is a most tedious part of doing it because you need to check what, where actually it is lo located at least one single example of it and then it's going to be easy so what i am interested in and i'm going to cheat a bit so i'm going to yes it's already here i'm going to have a look and see where this red curry chicken and pumpkin soup is located as you see, it's already in a division of the class called post entry, which doesn't mean much to me, but uh, basically it is why I'm saying that you should go and look what is it that you want. So this is, this is important, keep this in mind. So, so I am interested in the information, basically in this div class post entry, and then on this H3 tag. So this is what I'm interested in. And as you see, there are so many different things here. We also have a, H a tag, which basically takes you to a link. This is not what I want. I want this text here. So let's uh, repeat again. I am interested in the div class with post entry. Then on this H3 uh, tag, and then on the text within that. So how do we show this here? So before going there, let me build my CSV file. So I built a, a, a CSV file called foodwishes.csv in the same folder that my code is there. And, and by the way, the codes uh, and well, the CSV file, I can put it as well. You could find, you could find it in GitHub and I'm going to link to put the link in the description box. And I'm going to make a CSV file with three different uh, uh, columns, basically. Headline, summary, video link. Headline is the headline of the post. Summary is the short description of the video. And video link is, of course, the link to the YouTube. And then we get where we are interested in. Let me cut this for now. So only focus on this. If you remember, and let me see if I can bring this thing here as well. If you remember, what I said is that we are interested in this post class entry H3 category and then the text that we want. And it is as simple as doing what we have here. We already have built our soup here, this ugly thing that you saw. Then what I do I put all these things, this category actually, and, and uh, post entry in, in the file uh, in the uh, in the post. So I use soup dot find, and I'm in the, interested in division and the class post entry. And let's see what does it give us. Post. As you see, it's giving me the first header that actually I found, and you can see this red curry chicken thing here. Uh, mind you, there are so many different 
this post entry is going to happen so many different times. What you see here is just uh, pulling out the, fed, the first occurrence, and we are going to see later how we can collect all the the, the things that we are interested in with this post entry tag. But right now, it's only pulling out the first one. And as you see, everything is in here. But for the first part, I am interested in the title. So again, I should have done this probably before. Let me put this here. So if you remember, the title was in this div class post entry age three, and I was interested in a text. And it is exactly what I'm going to write here. Soup find div class post entry h3 text and print post title. Okay, this is what we wanted. Red curry chicken and pumpkin soup and winter squash is coming. This is the title of the post. Similar to that, I can look uh, for the summary and the link. Let's see, summary is here, and let's see where do we find the summary. Well, it's, it's only here, you can see it. There is a bit of text, which is the summary that we are looking for. And if we look again, it is in this class. And then basically it is some piece of text. And it is within a post that we already defined. There somewhere up, yeah. So let's see what does it give us. Yeah, it is indeed the explanation for the video. And similar to that, and you, you, you notice that I have this dot text at, the, at each of them at the end of it. This is the same thing here, basically soup find on the post and then the div class post entry, go look for h3 tag, and then bring out the text within there. This is the same thing here with the summary. Go find div class post body entry content, and then please take out the text for me. So this is how it's working. So let's see where we can take our YouTube, YouTube link from. And this should be somewhere, well, let me check, it's always easier, yep, if you see, you can find your YouTube, that is the channel, yeah, this is here. So it is in an iframe, and what we are interested is in this SRC part. So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say go in post, find iframe, and show me the SRC. Let's see how this works. Uh, I am given a link. I made more. Um, yeah, this is working. So back to where we started. Okay, as I said, with this step-by-step -step thing that you saw, we are going to pull out the first div class with post entry, the first uh, div class uh, with post body entry content, and the thing that we are interested with in that. But the fact is that we want to script the whole page, so we want all four posts and their, uh, their, their respective information. So what I'm going to do here is simply writing a for loop, and then just iterate it, and then I get everything. So if you see what I'm saying here is that before I had soup.find and this, and what I'm asking the code here to do is basically not only bring the first one, bring all the uh, piece of text, piece of information, whatever you want to call it, in that HTML source code that you have, where we have the div tag and the cast type is post entry. And then I will record the h3 part, h3 tag, and the text within it in a headline. And I just, just to make sure I'm printing the headline here. 
The same is happening for the summary. So basically, I'm going within the post. I'm going to look for the div class with post body entry content. And then uh, keep in mind that it is iterating and it is a, it's a for loop. So it's happening for all the tags that is found. And then I bring out the text. I print a summary. I do similar thing for the video link source. And then I print that. And then in each step, I add one line to my CSV file. So let's see what does it mean in practice. OK, so this is my first post, red curry chicken and pumpkin soup, the summary of it, the YouTube link to it. Then I have this one, which is a bit difficult to pronounce, but I think you probably could do it. So I have the title, I have the text, I have the YouTube link. The third one is also here. And finally, the fourth one. So, so at least in my Jupyter notebook that I see that I successfully could scrape the thing that I was interested in, and then I I, I brought it out uh, here to be printed in console. But let's have a look and see if I manage to do that in. Yeah. Okay. If it opens, well, apparently I have another version of it open, so let's have a look at that one. Yep. Well, yeah, as you see, I have the column headline with red curry chicken and all other foods in the first page. Then I have the summary. And then I have the video links that could be used. So this is a simple introduction on how to use Beautiful Soup for scraping the website for the information that you are interested in. And uh, to give you a hint, web scraping and also the data visualization that uh, you will hopefully watch during the video lectures of this week is going to be used in your next, I mean, in your first mini project, really. So this is part of the thing. You're going to scrape some data from a website, and then you're going to write a piece of code and give me some meaningful information that I'm looking for it. And by that, I conclude this video and enjoy playing your hand on a scraping different websites, getting the information that you want to collect and analyze and build predictive models. And then with this, see you in next video. Bye for now.